This is Virgo Travel Lisa here. And if you didn't know, I'm on a two continent, eight country, two and a half month backpack trip. Literally. I'm going from Africa to Europe, starting in May, ending in July, going to Zimbabwe and France. And I'm doing all of this in a single backpack. I've got everyday clothes, I've got professional clothes, I've got first aid, I have books, I have technology, I have it all. And it's all on my back. So in this video, I'm gonna show you what I decided to pack. I'm gonna give you the lessons that I learned in this packing trip. And hopefully, it's helpful. Enjoy the video. Item, the most important item when you're traveling is the correct suitcase selection. So here you see this big, beautiful backpack. It's nice, got lots of pockets. It's got all the right support. It's designed for a long trip, right? As experienced as I am traveling, this is actually not the backpack that I selected to take on this trip with me for a couple of different reasons. I have a backpack like this, but I loaned it to someone and I couldn't get it before it was time for us to go on this trip. And so what did I do? I selected my next best, best option. I selected this backpack. Dun, 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 dun. I love this backpack. It's from eBags. I've recommended this very backpack to friends. It is so cool. It opens up like a suitcase. See that? You can pack it like you would a normal carry-on. It's got all these pockets. It's got, it's got hidden pockets. It's got shelves. It's just really cool. And it's super durable. I love this bag. But here's the problem. This bag is called the Weekender. It's called the Weekender Mother Load. And the reason it's called the Weekender Mother Load is because it's for a weekend or maybe a little bit longer, maybe a week, but not two and a half months. Why? Because it has no back support. Do you see that? This backpack is not designed to be carried on your back with two and a half months worth of equipment. Whereas, this backpack has hip support, look at that, has shoulder support, has adjustable pads, has metal rods. I mean, this is designed for you to carry on your person for months. So lesson number one, pick the right bag. Had I been smart, I would have put this backpack on my back with all of my gear inside and walked around my house, walked around the block to see if it was gonna work for me. Because as soon as I got to the airport with this backpack on and all of the stuff inside, I knew that I wasn't gonna make it with this particular bag over two and a half months. It was too heavy, it was putting pressure on all the wrong parts of my body, it just wasn't the right bag. And that is not a fault of the bag, it's a fault of me for not planning correctly. For this two and a half months trip, I started with this and I actually am sending this back to the States and I purchased this in a South African mall. <laughs> so when I get home, I'm gonna have two backpacks like this, this one and the one I loaned out to a friend because I didn't plan well. I'm sure that some people are wondering, why didn't you just get a wheeled luggage or why didn't you bring wheeled luggage with you? But the reason I didn't do it is because when you're traveling as many places as I'm going, it doesn't always make sense. In fact, usually it doesn't make sense to bring wheeled luggage with you. The backpacks are versatile. You can quickly move with them. You can stay in all kinds, kinds of accommodations. You can often prevent or avoid additional luggage fees depending on the airline. I mean, there's just so many reasons why 
people backpack and backpacks are more useful than wheeled luggage. For this kind of a trip, multi-stop, multi-continent, in and out of places, I actually, I do recommend a backpack. I just recommend that you think about and plan the kind of backpack that you're gonna use. All right, that's enough about luggage. What's next? So the next thing I pack is all my like health and wellness stuff. You'll see I have vitamins here. It's like a multivitamin. Um, I always take sleep aids. Um, I think sleep aids are super important when you travel because you never know if you're going to be able to fall asleep while you're like on the plane or when you're in a new hotel or a hostel or wherever you're staying, an Airbnb. And so sleep, the lack of sleep can ruin a trip. Like it really can. And then this is like a natural sleep aid. It's by doTERRA. It's called Serenity. It's like an oil. Like things like vitamin C because you can and probably will get sick if you're traveling because you're out of your comfort zone you're out of your normal kind of germophere <laughs> i just made that up your germophere but like you're in contact with new germs new things new people you're eating new cuisine your sleep is probably a little altered and it's just like it creates perfect opportunity for people to get sick so like i pack things like vitamin c I know some people who take echinacea. I actually, um, in, I have this apple cider vinegar. That's a great way to ward off sickness. And I want to give a shout out to my friend, Misty. Uh, Misty, if you're watching this video, shout out to you because I actually used to never travel with apple cider vinegar. And I went on a trip with her and she brought a bottle. And then like, you know, I could see that it was like helpful to her. She drank the whole bottle over the course of the trip. And so I, I really appreciate it. I always take a probiotic. OMG, I can't tell you how helpful probiotics are when you're traveling. Um, they're good for your normal gut health, but like when you're traveling and you're eating new foods, like it's just helpful to have something like a probiotic. Um, I, I recently added fiber to my packing list. Uh, I don't know, I have a mixed review on the fiber thing. I don't usually take fiber in the States. But, you know, I've traveled with some people who use it because, like, you know, you're encountering new foods and your stomach can get all jacked. I think the probiotic does enough of that. And then if you also throw in the apple cider vinegar, I don't know. But if you're a person who does fiber in your normal life, maybe add that. We'll see. I don't know if I'm going to take this in the future. Also, if you have prescription-grade medications, this is not prescription, but, like, any kind of prescription medications, over-the-counter medications that you know you're going to need, definitely take them. Don't assume the country you're going to is going to have them. The things I take... These are, um, I have two of these. These, my, my cousin, Vonda, shout out to Vonda. Yo, Vonda, good looking out. Um, gave me those like two or three, uh, years ago. And they are the kinds of, you put them on your, on your pressure point on your wrist and they help with motion sickness and they save my life. When I went scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef, I had those, I had those. Oh my gosh, everybody was getting seasick because the water was so choppy and we had a ride on the ocean for like, I don't know, an hour and a half to get to our destination, an hour and a half back. People were vomiting on the side of the boat. It was terrible. And the reason that my cousin gave me those is because the trip before that, when I went shark diving in uh, South Africa, I had a similar situation where I had to get on a boat, go out into choppy water for like an hour, and I got seasick. It was like the worst. And you know, when you have a special experience like that, like, uh, shark diving or scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef like you don't want that that's a once-in-a-lifetime thing and it can be terrible it can suck if you don't have the proper equipment and the last thing I the other thing I recommend is taking um, nutrition bars and then also like of course everybody takes wet wipes because you have to you don't know if you're gonna be in a country without toilet tissue you might be stuck on a plane where you need to wipe your face I mean wet wipes just come in handy for all kinds of things in addition to that this says laundry pouch but it's actually like feminine hygiene products in here I take all my feminine hygiene products like I fill this joker up two and a half months this is two and a half months worth of feminine hygiene products because I've been to countries where I could not find feminine hygiene products in these other things like I have um, normal like this is like you know q-tips um, insect repellent stuff. Th this, these are all like toiletry thingies. <laughs> my toothbrush. This is not really how I keep my toothbrush. I just for show for this video. Um, I don't usually take this much 
these this many toiletries like this is a lot um i could have done this smarter like i could have been more frugal like this bag is makeup and I, I haven't even worn makeup one day that i've been on this trip so i probably could have done without this bag so i probably could have been a little lighter but my point in this part is to think about what you're going to need negotiate your non-negotiables and then be error on the side of safe i will say with toiletry medical wellness stuff err on the side of taking more if you find that you're not going to be using it then leave it in the country like leave it like i might leave these fibers so i because i'm doing two continents i have two lonely planet books this is a digital scale i don't travel now without having a portable digital scale because i have been stuck in airports where my luggage is like six pound in australia my luggage was like six pounds over what was allowed and the cost between the normal price and the heavy price was like 150 dollars or what else we have here okay this is like my passport portfolio wallet stuff all right so take a notebook that's easy take your sunglasses i always take cheap sunglasses i know people who travel like really fancy sunglasses but i lose stuff when i travel so i, I just take the cheap stuff I always take a wristlet wallet, like a wallet that I could put on my wrist because it's safer, it's convenient, da da da. But here, here's the next thing. This is really important. So get a passport case holder. You don't have, it doesn't have to be nice, but something to hold your critical documents and the majority of your money. So in this, I have, this is a vaccination record because I'm going to countries that require certain kinds of vaccinations passport but here's the most here's what i want to talk about your money omg i'm going to turn these over so y'all can't take my stuff um but i have several different credit cards here i have three credit cards and a debit card and the reason i take this many credit cards first of all is because they're all travel credit cards so i'm not paying any fees transaction da, da, da. but if something gets lost stolen deactivated that's how serious I am about making sure you have enough money on you. Have a third level backup. Your primary card, your backup card, and your backup to your backup. And then I always take a debit card. And then I take cash, man. American dollars in the world today mean a lot. So next I have some day bags. This is a reusable shopping bag. Like the kind you see at every grocery store. I never travel without a reusable shopping bag. I also take a bag, a purse with a shoulder strap. I take a little purse, like some people take lots of big purses. The reason I like this little purse is because you can stick it, you can compress it very easily and stick it in, you know, small luggage. And then also, like, I just don't want to give people the impression that I got a lot of stuff on my person when I'm walking around. Big shout out to my mom. What's up, mom? Jackie Logan, the ultimate traveler, uh, passed this purse on to me. So I've been using this one. Uh, yeah, my mom is like the OG traveler she's done it a billion times and so knows what's up and that purse is what's up next i have a bunch of electronics so uh here let me just start here so these are adapters converters power converters these are both for europe i'm going to europe right after this i'm meeting up with my fiance in europe and so this one's for him one's for me this is a my computer cord and i have another computer cord over there i always take two computer cords because when I was in Australia something happened with my computer cord and I couldn't charge my computer like I just couldn't like I had done something wrong with it or maybe it was just an old cord I don't know what was going on but I could not use it and I was up a creek so I ended up having to spend some of my vacation time going all over the place looking for computer cords and I ended up buying one that had the wrong like so I bought one that was adapted for Australian outlets so when I got home to the states I couldn't even use it and I spent like 60 bucks on it because it was for a computer and so it just is a bad like it's a bad it's better to just pack an extra cord for the devices that you know you're going to need that know you're, you know you're going to use because you don't want to be up a creek spending more money more time than you have to because you're not prepared um this is my external hard drive because i'm doing my little videos if you're not a vlogger you may not need that but i have that um, i've got some these are my cables extra cables to connect cameras to connect my my phone and these are just like extra i have like three of these because they're easy to pack and like i said extra is better like extra is just better um this is for the electric toothbrush headphones those are some big old headphones you don't need big headphones like that um if you're not serious about your music and then here is and one of my favorite things about travel is that you you have such 
awesome experiences you want to capture those you want to capture them any way you can capture them on your phone if you don't have a super nice camera capture them on your camera capture them on both your phone and your camera it doesn't matter but just capture them and so i just take my computer a lot of people don't travel with, with computers i do because um i do the vlogging thing and also just because i do work and i like to write while i'm traveling and computers help me stay organized so you don't i mean it's up to you but I, I always take my laptop no matter where I go. This is supposed to represent the camera that I'm using right now to record. So this is all of my techie stuff. This, I put all of my loose stuff in here. You know, I don't want cords and pieces of technology like hanging around. I just keep organized this way. And it's a hard case, so it protects my stuff. Basically, I try to protect all my tech. I mean, I keep it mostly in protective cases. And let, speaking of protective, I might as well transition over here to my backpack. So this is a special backpack. So the good news about this backpack is it's designed for cameras and technology. So it um, opens up here at the bottom. Just give you a sneak peek. Opens up here at the bottom. There you go. And you can see that it's got all these padded compartments for, you know, things like my lenses which doesn't have my cap on it right now um, and other things so that's on the bottom and that helps me protect some of these other pieces like I put all this stuff down there and and then it also has a padded laptop section and it also has support on the back of the backpack so like I was talking about this earlier when I was talking about my big backpack you it, this sits on your hips there's padding these are good arm things like if you're carrying around technology all day and you're climbing mountains or going on wilderness hikes or whatever you want a backpack that's going to be comfortable and functional and so I think it's important to be wise about the backpack that you're taking uh, and then if you don't need to carry this big old thing with you like let's just say you're going to go up the street and you're hanging out with some friends and you're not going to take everything with you just use your um your little your this guy the reusable shopping bag the other thing about this backpack that I really like is that it has a water holder. OMG. I used to travel, one of the, it used to be one of those travels that, travelers that didn't go with a water bottle. Um, and, and I learned, I learned that's not cool. So I always travel with a water bottle. Now, I'm going to use this cheapy plastic bottle as a stand-in for my good bottle that I would normally put here. Look, the reality is that I lost it. <laughs> Anyway, and I left my water bottle at a conference in a different city and I couldn't go back to get it. So unfortunately, I, I'm using this like little cheapy replacement bottle. I mean, until I can buy another good quality water bottle someplace along the way. All right, over here, my clothing. So I'm gonna do um, a separate kind of thing, a separate video on clothes, like what to pack, what not to pack. I got my um, neck pillow, other things that I have here, bubble wrap. People always laugh at me when they see my bubble wrap. I always pack bubble wrap because bubble wrap is great. It's very versatile. You can use it for a lot of things. You can help uh, keep things that are moist, dry, or protect, it, protect some of your dry stuff if you have bubble wrap. But mostly because when I'm out and about, I'll buy stuff. Like here, I'm in, I'm in wine country. Stellenbosch is just up the road from where I'm at right now. I'll buy a bottle of wine, take it with me, and I have some bubble wrap instead of spending six or eight bucks on a wine bubble container. It doesn't matter how many things that I've purchased, I rarely have broken things because I always pack bubble wrap. And then last little things I'll cover in this video are like plastic baggies. Uh, this is a bag full of plastic bags. These are dryer sheets. Um, I always pack dryer sheets because if for no other reason, it's going to keep my backpack fresh. And when you're traveling, you have like dirty clothes in your backpack next to clean clothes. Your whole backpack is going to start smelling, you know, like you just dryer sheets, keep things fresh. But then also you do laundry when you're traveling, especially for long trips. And so these, you know, instead of buying these, I just grab a couple and bring them with me. In addition to my dryer sheets, I have a laundry detergent. This I also brought from home. It's a little baggy laundry detergent because, like I said earlier, I'm going to be washing clothes and it's just better to like be prepared. But then this guy is a, these are clothespins. And I take this with me almost everywhere I go because like I said, you're going to do laundry. A lot of countries don't have dryers or dryers are just not readily available. And so if you wash your clothes, you might be washing your clothes in a sink and then you need to hang them up 
or you might be washing your clothes maybe they do have a dryer where you're, i mean a washing machine where you're saying but not a dryer then you're going to need to hang them up this just keeps my stuff organized i bought these in africa the last time i was here super cute and it's just it's easy to compress and use it for i put all my little laundry stuff in here and the last little things that i have here are one this is a um quick drying towel i haven't used this one yet this is a new one i just got from amazon um but i i recommend these especially if you're going to be staying in hostels where in europe i'm going to be staying in some hostels so these quick drying towels like this is a full body towel if i opened it up it'd be like the size of a regular bathroom towel but you can see how little it is so it's super like I can condense it and keep it in small spaces and then more importantly it's quick drying as I okay last few things that I'll cover in this video are mostly emergency supplies so I've got some duct tape I've got safety pins I have more than one and then I have uh, crazy glue and I don't imagine I'll be using a lot of these, but I will have, I will say that in the past I have used them before. In fact, I'm already using a safety pin right now. So that's my summary of the things that I packed. As you can see, it's quite a bit, but it all fits in that backpack and it's enough for two and a half months of travel. So I hope you found this video helpful. Google Travelista here, over and out.